Apart from the obvious reasons, what uh, inspired you to choose Angela to uh, receive your award? Well, you know, I've been very involved the last two years um, with the horrors and the question of, of mass incarceration, the reality of it, and what's going on in this country. And of course, uh, Angela is a prison abolitionist. And it's been very interesting for me to uh, understand the difference between prison reform and prison abolition. And she's absolutely right. I, mean, I have really dug in and I've been working with women in prison. So it's become, and we have states of denial, the illegal incarceration of women, children, and people of color, which is a series I do here at the Brooklyn Museum in the fall and in the spring. And as the more I know, the more I realize a, the system's not broken. The system was built to be the way it is. It is functioning exactly as it is, and it's been very successful, which is terrifying. And secondly, you can't reform that. What you do need to do is abolish it and really talk about, all right, what do we mean by punishment? What do we mean by making, bringing people to a place of recognition and rehabilit true rehabilitation? that they can come back into society and have full lives and be members of the community. And there are countries that are doing that, but our country is not. We are punishment bound and we are creating, as you well know, um, a, 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 a horror uh, of both torture and also disenfranchisement. And this is, this is not a mistake or an error or broken. This was built. Do you think um, for the length of time that it's taken to reach this point, how long, if you can even imagine, it would take for this to turn around? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's this really serious questions. We're also looking at a political landscape right now, which is pretty horrifying. Um, but the more that's in the news, I mean, the states now are beginning to take, at least people are recognizing that, you know, um, that, that children, that minors shouldn't be tried as adults, that minors shouldn't be put in solitary confinement, that minors shouldn't be left with hard criminals, whatever that really means, um, and what the drug laws have done. So I think that there are certain things that are going to be easy to get through the weeds, and they're starting to move. And I think that, that we have state-sanctioned violence, and that we have a local military police that have arms from the Pentagon. I mean, they, these are war machines. Um, and that it's now front page news. And we're, we're really reaching a point of tension where some decisions are gonna have to be made. And hopefully they'll be the correct decisions. And then we really do have to take a look at our entire system and what do we want to do about crime and why is there crime why are we why do we not have better education why do we not have people who have food I mean it's you know as well as I know how intricately this is connected so it's it's a little bit complicated to take apart but one has to do it every day you can't just not it's got to be you know, it's got to be addressed people have to be, think about it learn about it talk about it and fight now, one last question. How did Angela feel when you uh, um, chose her? How did that process go? Well, you know, she, she was very gracious. Um, I'm sure she receives a lot of invitations. Uh, Gloria and I, Gloria Steinem and I, wrote to her together, as we do for these awards. Um, and um, she was delighted. And she's delighted to be here. And it'll be fun to hear her speak with Gloria Steinem today in conversation. We look forward to it. Yeah, you're going to be the fly on the wall today. <laughs> Fantastic. That was epic. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. I really appreciate it. Thanks okay. a lot.